January over. So true. F January, bro. F January. Also F February. But you absolutely have to go through January in order to get through February. And then I feel like the year, the fun part of the year really starts having the chance to happen starting from March 1st. It's a long February this year. It's true. It's a multiple of four, but it's not a multiple of 400. You're allowed to like February. I don't have a problem with Valentine's Day. I just like weather still sucks. Sun still goes down super early. Still not a whole lot of cool stuff going on in February. But, but March, in March, things start to, you know, you might have like a couple. You, that's where you get fake spring usually. Where you have like a week that's actually like spring and you're like, oh, maybe it's like actually going to be an early spring this year. And then usually you get like another month of winter, but you got like a little preview at least. Hang on. I have to set my YouTube videos. I'm sorry. I ran out of time. My main strength is ignorance. Super auto pets. Upload thumbnail. Super auto pets. Dash Jan 31. Oh, probably 30 because I made it last night dash 2024.jpg. Anybody else a real gangsta and you don't use autocomplete uh, when searching for a file? You just type in what you remember to be the string of the file name? I always feel like hacker mans whenever I do it. That's the Node.js coming back to re wreak havoc. That will be set to public immediately. Please don't watch it yet, even though it's going to be up starting right now. Don't watch it yet because I need to place two mid-roll. No, it's a shorter video, one mid-roll. And then, a little tease for you. Just a little tease. Relax, I'm going tarot mode. This is a fresh Balatro video for YouTube, not a stinky Steam VOD or Stream VOD, I promise. Relax, I'm going tarot mode. Thumbnail will be Balatro YT-Jan02.jpg. Why does every NPM package have like 12 critical vulnerabilities? Because like it's the free and open source software community. So like every single critical line of code is written by like some Midwestern libertarian who has like a 1% a chance of going criminally insane every single day. Like for a couple of months, you're probably totally fine. But then you stack though that kind of technical debt over a few years and all of a sudden, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> you, you're, you're running a risk. That's all I'm saying. But also, as much as the joke maybe is at their expense, society also could not like live without them. So the world don't move to the beat of just one drum, okay? But then I, my, my daily maintenance is not done yet. Letterbox.com, log movie, barbarian. 2022 from Zach Kreger that gets a four stars and a heart. Originally, until almost the end of the movie, it was tracking at a, a very solid 3.5 out of 5. The last 10, 12 minutes of it stick the ending so well, tie up all the themes while also being a lot of fun uh, that I said, there's no way I can't give this a four. Elevated Horror. Adjective, a subgenre of horror cinema where the movie is set in Detroit and the real monster is Ronald Reagan. Although there is also a monster. <laughs> Justin Long kills it. Justin Long is great in that movie. He's, he's also very funny in that movie. I was just struck by the fact there's got to be like two other uh, crazy people like me out there. I was struck by the fact the whole movie, I was like, this is Joe Weisenthal. Bro looks like literally one-to-one -one with Joe Weisenthal. So true, plus two. Is that someone you know? It's a famous person. How was Nomadland? Three stars uh, and no heart. I will not be elaborating further. I respect Nomad Nomadland. I got what it was going for, and I think it succeeded at what it was going for, but I did not... Uh, I, it's, it's tough to criticize movies in the negative direction, right? Because if you say, like, I just didn't enjoy it, it paints you in a bad faith sense as, like, uh, I only want to see, like, Ant-Man beat up on Kang the Conqueror. You know what I mean? 
But like, I don't think every movie necessarily has to be enjoyable in the sense that you're clapping your hands and jumping out of your seat. But also, like, I, I was not that intellectually stimulated watching it. But in, then in saying that, it's like, oh, so it was too dumb for you? And I'm like, no, it wasn't too dumb for me. I just, I don't know, I just didn't vibe with it, okay? My, my vibe is my vibe, and Nomad Land's vibe is Nomad Land's vibe, and we both got our vibes, but our vibes don't get harmonic resonance. They didn't create dissonance, but they didn't create harmonic resonance, okay? Can you explain your letterbox profile pic? Yeah. It's um, fake Gordon Ramsay from the show where he goes undercover in his own, uh, or in, in restaurants. I don't know if it's his own restaurant or what. In, where he's, he's wearing the pilot's outfit, you know, the one I'm talking about, but it's not really him, it's somebody in makeup to kind of look like him. Hey, Kate asked me a question last night. I didn't know the answer. I'm going to ask you now. If you break your pelvis, you get a cast around your pelvis. This was inspired by Meredith getting hit by Michael Scott's car on The Office. Sorry to use the passive voice. I'm, uh, I have a job interview with the New York Times later. When they give you the cast, they have to have like a port right? For, for waste, they have, there's a hole in the cast or a catheter. A catheter that runs like down the... No, because a catheter is not going to work. What if you have to poop? There's no poop catheter. I'm still in a dream. Catheter. That's now, that's Goldfinger. It's not Snake Eater anymore. But they're kind of, they're inspired by one another. He's the man, the man with the Midas touch. Oh, such a cold finger. You think that's today's? 1981, 186 milli views with the drums. Oh, that's uh, the Human League, Don't You Want Me? She was working as a waitress in a cocktail bar when I found you. We're using the wrong kind of conjugation here. Don't, don't you want me? Synth one, two, three, synth four, five, six, and seven. No, they ruined it. They ruined it today. That needs to be that needs to be higher in the mix, and it needs to be in a higher register. That's my feedback. Yeah, okay. There's something good. That, that's the fastest bandle I've ever had. Do you think there's any chance that uh, Apollo gets this? Uh, he's already done it. Did he get it? I think this is the kind of song Apollo possibly has never heard. He also got it in one. Never mind. I apologize. I wasn't familiar with your game. I wasn't saying it's hard necessarily, just that it seems like it's possible he'd never been exposed to it. But then again, I, I think he's seen all three seasons of Stranger Things. So, What is Johto again? Johto is gold silver. We're, we will not be getting nine out of nine, by the way, because like, we're, we're just not. But like, there's a few of these I can get. Poison Ground comes up all the time. And I always forget who it is. People are really saying eight, nine out of ten on this, or eight, nine out of nine on this one. This is insane. Like the grass is easy enough. Okay, first in evolutionary line, maybe you've heard of a little Bulbasaur. Poison Ground is Nitto Queen. That one, I'm going to lock it into the cerebellum. Poison, first in the evolutionary line, Gliscor. No, Glygar. Glygar. Chat, riddle me this. It's a scorpion. It's a purple scorpion. How is it not poison? It's flying ground. How can something be flying ground? It has a stinger. Ground and grass. This is a gimme. It is Torterra. Holy cow, it worked. I always remember Ludwig saying... Ground is not necessarily things that are on the ground. It's things that shake the ground when they walk. Or, in the case of Gligar, something that doesn't touch the ground at all, because that bro has wings. So just remember, like, it, just because it works some of the time doesn't mean it works 100% of the time. And then maybe the second gen was mm, not Piplup, but Mudkip, in which case... Swampert is the final evolution. 
Okay, well, I can live with that, honestly. It's to they did Toto Deal second? That's crazy because Toto Deal is washed. Nobody cares about Toto Deal. Everybody cares about Swampert, bro. Wrong. Actually, I'm right. Swampert is one of the highest uh, DPS water type Pokemon in Pokemon Go. Nobody gives a shit about Feraligator. Straight up. He's actually right. Much like the heuristic about ground Pokemon, I am right occasionally. No, he was cute when I was nine. Okay, we're talking about like their resume, okay? What have they done for me lately? With a unibody frame. There's the Honda Ridgeline. Okay, there's one. We're not completely washed. This is Seth Rogen and Viggo Mortensen. That's not even a contest. Coming in chocolate, cherry, and butterscotch. The Dilly Bar is an ice cream associated with what chain? Imagine saying a word wrong. That's Dairy Queen. I'm just gonna say it. You gotta be about 98 fucking years old to get a Dilly Bar at Dairy Queen. I'm sorry that the ice cream world has passed you by. You can get whatever you want. But um, you should be getting at least a, a blizzard at this point in your life. In fact, you might only get a blizzard. Otherwise, I would say you're probably going to Dairy Queen too often. I like Dairy Queen. I go maybe one to two times a year and I get a blizzard every time. Because why wouldn't you get a blizzard? Chicken basket, pretty sick. It is. The only thing, like the chicken strip basket is incredible. Never look up the health information. The chicken strip basket, especially if you get gravy with it, is actually like 1,900 calories or something. Like it's a daily recommended amount of energy for an adult to consume. Duh. No, you don't understand. Like almost all fast food is like really bad for you. But like a McDouble is 400 calories. The chicken strip basket from Dairy Queen is like, it might not be 1,900. It might be like 1,300 calories, but still. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, okay? I'm not saying the sodium is high. Whenever I see the sodium is high in something, I'm like, don't worry about it. I'll just drink more water. Remember when Michael Jackson and Billy Mays died like in the same week? What are you trying to do? Why are you trying to pit two bad bitches against each other? You're trying to bait me into saying some fucked up shit about Billy Mays? I got nothing against Billy Mays whatsoever. But what do you mean Michael Jackson and Billy Mays died in the same week? I remember where I was. When I heard Michael Jackson died, keep in mind, I'm, I'm in basically not rural Ontario at this point. I'm in Kingston, Ontario in an, in an office with like nine other people where the radio is on uh, all day. It's a rock radio station. It must have been 2008 or 2009. They made uh, an announcement. On, they like interrupted a song and made an announcement on the radio that Michael Jackson died. I just remember my boss going, <gasps> Like she was like, she ran over to the radio and turned it up. It was like the JFK assassination. Did she turn her oxygen up? She was like, I don't know. She was probably 28. <laughs> Choir florist glee, tar, tar pit, snake pit, fire pit, band pit. Uh, that's bullshit. Th those are real things. Orchestra, orchestra pit, fire pit, snake pit, barbecue pit. What the? There's like a thousand different pits, bro. Snake pit, orchestra pit, tar pit, fire pit. <laughs> Liar, choir, fryer, fire. Words that rhyme. Tar, barbecue, snake, orchestra. What is a snake pit? Bro, it's a pit with your... I'm literally right. Snake pit. It's right there. It's a pit with snakes in it. It's a thing. It was orchestra pit. Bro, I literally go to the ballet. I go to the opera. I go to the symphony. I'm cultured. What'd you think it was going to be, Brad? So you stick the joke, and then because we're going to put this on TikTok later, you give like 10 seconds of silence at the end. And you try not to swear, because the TikTok algorithm just fucking crushes the stuff when you swear. It, it gets like eight views. So you got you to gotta constantly be thinking about that content flywheel, okay? And then when you clip this, because I'm going to take your clip, 
Don't clip it with the swear word in it because then I got to download the whole thing and open it in Adobe Premiere Rush and then cut it and then re-render it and then upload it to Twitch and then use the exporter to send it to TikTok, okay? Where's my cut if I do that? Wait, where the fuck is my cut on TikTok, bro? Every time I, I sign into TikTok, it's like, good news. You have uh, earned the right to go live on TikTok. And then it says, like, here's what your income could be. And it's like, if you have 100,000 subscribers, you'll make like $150,000 a month. And I'm like, 150,000 paying subscribers? I only have 46,000 free followers, man. Like, I think you're, you're juicing the numbers a little bit. That seems like it's probably like a hundred times more than I could realistically expect. Start selling affiliated products on your live. TikTok is so funny, or maybe me being on TikTok is so funny because like they also do give you like those offers and it's like, hey, you should make a video about X topic. It's going viral right now. And it, like yesterday it was like, you should make a video about top hoodie brands. And I was like, yeah, you got me figured out. Whatever metadata you got on the back end, it's, it's working really well. Don't even question it. Hey, paper mache Mephistopheles, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Hey, Anel, I saw a dude chewing Zin at the gym. Any thoughts? I got to tell you, uh, the, you, you always continue to get more out of touch. Um, so I thought maybe vaping was the natural like, endpoint of nicotine delivery. I don't even know what Zin is. I just know uh, that it's nicotine. And it comes in a pouch. Is that correct? They're little snooze pouches. It's, it's vaping for dip. What does that mean? It's contained dip. So it's like a, a, like a Tide Pod nicotine supplement, kind of. Spitless dip. I don't really understand dip either. Why do you spit when you dip? Because it's nasty? Well, then why do you eat it in the first place? <laughs> you can understand my confusion, right? For the buzz? I don't, I don't know if I... I'm, I'm trying to figure out what's the difference. So what's the, what, what is a Zin pouch then? You put it into your mouth. What happens after that? You suck or chew on the pouch. And then like nicotine juice comes out but you don't have to spit it out it gets absorbed sublingually it's kind of like a tea bag is that you you spot you slot it up in your lip and it gets absorbed into your gums librarian i don't know how you're going to make content out of that but thank you for the gifted subscriptions thank you i'm just trying to understand okay so is it, like, I'm, I'm trying to meet Gen Z on their level, okay? You are trying to quit smoking, so you start zinning instead, which gives you the nicotine buzz, but it isn't as toxic. You kind of got it? Okay. My, my thoughts on this have, have always been, I think, fair, in my opinion and uh, reasonable. If you already are addicted to nicotine and you take a toxic form of it, then it's good for you to go to a less harmful way to get your fix if you're not going to quit it entirely. If you are not addicted to nicotine and you start doing nicotine supplementation, I feel like you've lost the plot. You've lost your mind. Like, that's crazy. I'm sure hundreds of thousands of people fall into that camp, but that is, that's kind of insane. Chew, I know chew is bad for you, but isn't it because there's also like other poison stuff in the chew? If the Zin is like just the nicotine and I don't know, probably like mint flavoring or something, that might not be so bad. I don't know, I'm not a scientist. I don't work at Philip Morris or the health department. I really, like, I, I'll give you my, my history with smoking, okay? I think, I've, Josh, sometimes in the past, you know, like 10 years ago, if he was really drunk, he would smoke like two cigarettes. And then one time, I was like, hey, let me try that. And uh, I was like, I do not get this at all, honestly. But then there was like a three-week period in university where... 
me and my boys smoked like a cigar once a week. And the first time I was like, wow, this sucks, but I bet the next time is going to be awesome. And then the next time sucked. And I was like, okay, I'm going to give you like one more chance. And then we all got cigars for the third time. And we were all like, bro, this fucking sucks, dude. This shit is actually stupid. It's never good. Cigars are like expensive. They make you smell like shit and have a headache and not be able to breathe. They taste like garbage and you don't even get high. Like it, maybe I shouldn't be saying this as a brand ambassador, but if you're going to smoke something bad for you, you might as well be having fun, right? You might not just smoke in like just to smoke. That's crazy. I don't understand cigars at all. I don't think they make you look cool, honestly. Like I, I think when I was like 18, I was like, oh, that makes you look cool. But when I turned like 19, I was like, you do not look cool with this with a cigar. You have to be middle-aged. I don't know. When it, during COVID, uh, I would always take a walk. And then in this park near our old place, every Saturday, like four old dudes would pull out lawn chairs and smoke cigars in a circle with each other. And I was like, I don't know anything about them. But if they thought that they were looking cool, they, that impression was lost on me. Let me just put it that way. I was not like, whoa, there's some real gangsters in the park. I was like, let me guess, your wife doesn't let you smoke inside. Like, wow, really? You got your lawn chair out in a public place, just sitting down, like smoking a cigar with one ashtray on the sidewalk in between all four of you? Like, it's just fucking, it's just kind of fucking weird to me, to be honest with you. What on earth is this ad, bro? You ever get, so I usually get these intermittent fasting ads. Um, but it's almost always like just a dude with his belly hanging out on each one. I don't know what I did to get the gay married Navy captains. <laughs> I'm happy for him or whatever. I'm just kind of confused about what, what it is in my cookies that, that got this done, man. This is so funny. This is, uh, uh, World always has the best ads. This is also where we got the t-shirt ad that was like, um, don't mess with me or don't mess with old people. Life in prison means less to them. Oh, man. It's so funny, man. It's like the stages of their life is like, look, they're like best friends and they're like, yeah, let's go out and let's go out and have a night on the town. And then they're like, we don't get to party that much, but here we are having fun. And then finally, like, I don't know why they're older at 55 to 65 than at 65 plus. But anyway, finally, they realize that they're in love and they can spend their life together, and then they go back to partying again, and then they, I don't know, whatever. This is like Denmark minus the other peninsula. Maybe it's a western border. Maybe this is like a, uh, a Cote d'Ivoire. Yo! Metacritic score 84% is not in the Silent Hill universe. Someone is shooting a gun. Gears of War 4. Nope. Originally on the PlayStation 3. Kill Zone 2. It is in the franchise. Genre. First person shooter. Kill Zone 3. Kill Zone. Kill Zone 3. The answer is Kill Zone 3. Whoa! <laughs> Me when I see the Suicide Squad take a piss on the Flash. And so the Flash has expired. He saved our lives, yet we ended his. As honorable warriors, we will show proper respect to this fallen hero. By show a little class, man. That holy shit. Congratulations. No! I will never pirate this game! I was so excited to pirate this game, but now I'm not gonna pirate it! They're, they're desecrating my childhood! I will not be playing it because it looks bad, okay? It's got nothing to do with the fact that they fucking killed Batman in the opening scene or whatever. It looks like a waste of time. We are not the same. Do not think that I am your ally. Spoilers? The game is called Kill the Justice League, bro! 
Squeaks is streaming, is streaming it today. I watched him stream a little bit of it uh, yesterday. How do you think I knew so much about it? And? And? <laughs> and he was streaming it. It's just, and no further comments are, are necessary. Smart of you to not type in chat. Excuse me, VIP Daniel, I saw you typing up a storm. I was a little offended that you didn't type back to me. I was typing bat chest. I was only there for like two minutes or something. I typed bat chest a couple times. When the flash showed up, I said, the flash, bat chest. But then Squeaks' chat is crazy because it's like 99% emotes that I don't have. So it just looks like indecipherable text flying by at like 10,000 meters per second. Like, I feel like such a boomer. I go in there with like my better Twitch TV emote. And I'm like, you know, Keck W. People are like, who's dropping Keck W? I'm, drop, I'm dropping Sag Laugh. Sag Laugh is the way that you laugh in this chat. And I'm like, oh, I'll just leave. The Zodiac Killer. This is Nancy Drew. It is a Nancy Drew game. Okay. That narrows it down. Maybe warnings at Waverly Academy. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now, now we're cooking. Now we got something. Nancy Drew. Secrets can kill. This looks like secrets can kill. Yeah! How did you know? Well, it's simple. It, they had a book about the Zodiac Killer. It had to be Nancy Drew. It's the only game with the courage to put like a, a real murder in it. If it was a, a game that was made by a public corporation that was uh, concerned with shareholder value, it would have been called like, you know, the, the, the big murder, the big murderer. They got no courage. A concoction by David Merkin that never fails to sink to the lowest common denominator yet often hits a funny bone. Sigourney Wiener. <laughs> it was by accident, I promise. Sigourney Weaver and Jennifer Love Hewitt. This is Heartbreakers. This is Heartbreakers. Ray Liotta, Gene Hackman, Sigourney Weaver, Jennifer Love Hewitt. This is a, a TBS classic right here. Sigourney Wiener is really funny. I think that my um, language processing area of my brain has permanently been altered by streaming on Twitch for so long. Like, I've been word wronging, like, at least, I would say, like, five times an hour. I don't think it's ever coming back, honestly. Today, I'd like to get from Qatar to India. Am I insane to think that China is a better connection than Pakistan here? Oh, Pakistan. Yep. Yeah, it was insane. Pakistan. For some reason in my head, I thought Pakistan. Like, remember, this is before we had China on the map for comparison. I thought that Pakistan would be like this big. I thought it would be like Portugal to India's Spain. But it's more like. I don't know, like. I can't think of a good example, like Denmark to India's Germany. I don't know. 200 million people live there. Yeah, you fucking idiot. I'm obviously talking about the geographic size of the country. Why are you trying to twist my words into something? Yeah, I'm smart enough to know what you're talking about, but some fucking moron watching might get offended. It's you, idiot. You're the idiot that's getting offended. Yeah, but if someone didn't know what you were talking about, they could take it the wrong way. Let me worry about that point, Dexter. Get your hands off the keyboard. You're on timeout. Five minutes. Don't touch the keyboard. Five minutes. And put your fucking phone away, okay? Just sit here and watch. I don't know if NL knew this. A lot of people live in Pakistan. I don't know if you knew this. You're fucking annoying as shit. Shut up. Ridiculous. Now stop derailing the stream. You're lucky with all the cots in chat. Otherwise, I'd be scrolling up and taking a peek at your username and then auditing your whole fucking... Let me guess, you were very active during the McDonald's stream. I'll, I, you, I could still scroll up. It's still in the cache. You better be careful. That's all I'm saying. The United Arab Emirates is like either here or here. Saudi Arabia is freaking huge. Let's drop a Saudi Arabia on you. Oh! Thanks for the free power-up.
I am God's chosen child. We got the geography quiz done with only one inaccuracy. <laughs> When NL calls Singapore a small country, even though 50 million people live there. Oh my God. Just for that, guess what? You're eating some puck doku. Two cup wins with different franchises. Okay, okay, okay. Pat Maroon. No hockey player has ever looked more like... Uh, Kick streamer. <laughs> okay. Hang on, I'm verifying that I'm not a robot. Yeah, guys, there's motorcycles. And there's a lot of other stuff, too. This, I mean, though, that looks like a, a scooter parked on the side of the road, is my two cents. They let us in. Okay, we must... You ever think that you definitely didn't get the CAPTCHA right? But they were like, you did as good as you could, so we let you in? There's no way I have a 100% efficacy rate at the CAPTCHA. Jodpers. A noun meaning riding breeches cut full through the hips and close-fitting from knee to ankle. Jodhpur is named after its founder, Rao Jodha. A Rajput chief in India in the 15th century. Yeah. Jodhpurs. A noun meaning riding breeches cut full through the hips and close fitting from knee to ankle. Jodhpur is named after its founder, Rao Jodha, a Rajput chief in India in the 15th century. Jodhpurs. A noun meaning riding breeches cut full through the hips and close fitting from knee to ankle. Jodhpur is named after its founder, Rao Jodha, a Rajput chief in India in the 15th Fuck! <laughs> No, 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 no. Pompeii, a geographical name meaning you, ancient Chibli. city and... Thank you, Chibli, for that one. Macaque, a noun meaning Thank any you, of a Super genus. Auto Pets Macaca, for that one. of chiefly Asian monkeys typically having a sturdy build and including some short-tailed or tailless forms, especially rhesus monkey. Macaque. Hauteur, a noun meaning arrogance, haughtiness, this word originates from the French term haute, meaning high. Hauteur. A noun meaning arrogance, haughtiness. This word originates from the French term haute, meaning high. Hauteur. Mm. A noun meaning haute, arrogance, haute, haughtiness. Like haute cuisine. This word originates from the French hauteur. term haute, meaning high. Hauteur. Yes! It was double French. It was French in the front and French in the back. Like a Renault. Fortissimo. Oh. An adverb or adjective meaning very loud. Fort used especially as a direction in music. Fort Fortissimo. Fortissimo is derived from the Italian language. Oh, it's one T. <laughs> it's one. T I should have gone with my instincts. Jod purrs. Jod oh, We were off by a variety of different ways there. Okay, fair enough. All right, that's the dolls for today. Or maybe we should run one more back, maybe. Play, play again. Practice on hard. Vicissitudes. A noun meaning the quality or state of being changeable. Mutability. Derived from Latin vicissitudo, the term evolved through Middle Vicissitudes? French. Vicissitudes? Vicissitudes. A noun meaning the quality or state of being changeable. Mutability. Derived from Latin vicissitudo, the term evolved through Middle French. Vicissitudes. Vicissitudes. A noun meaning the quality or state of being changeable. This is changeable. huge, guys. This Mutability. is huge. No! <laughs> no! Graticule. A noun meaning reticle. It can't this be This word originates else. from the Latin criticula, meaning fine latticework, derived from cratus for wicker work. Graticule. It a sounds like something Dan reticle. would call a This word a scope originates from the Latin PUBG. criticula, meaning fine latticework. Derived from Kratis for wicker work. <laughs> Graticule. A noun meaning reticle. Me listening this word to a originates JPEG from Mafia the Latin song? criticula, meaning fine lattice work. Derived from Kratis for wicker oh, yeah, work. Derived from Kratis for wicker work. A noun meaning reticle. Me listening to Lucini this word by Camp Lowe. originates from the Latin criticula. Trace shots of life for all night you dig it. Derived from Kratis for lattice work. <laughs> a noun meaning reticle. Ooh, okay, we got it. There's not, it can't be spelled like anything else. Avocations. A noun meaning a subordinate occupation. You can't stop me. Danseur. A noun meaning a male ballet dancer. 
dancer is derived from the French word Yes, I know. Entomophagy, a noun meaning the practice of eating insects. Entomophagy, a noun meaning the practice of eating insects. He's, I'm, I'm going the fuck off. Send me, where do they do the Scripps National Spelling Bee? Send me to the Scripps National Spelling Bee, bro. Schokrut, a noun meaning sauerkraut. This word is a modification of the German word sauerkraut, adapted by the French. Schokrut. You can't stop throw some Swahili at me. You can't stop me right now. Shukrut. Who is this girl talking to my husband? Kate, she's whispering sweet nothings into my ear. Are you ready for this one? Sacristy. A noun meaning a room in a church where sacred vessels and vestments are kept and where the clergy vests. Sacristy comes from Middle English. It, it couldn't have been anything else. It couldn't have been anything else but S-A-C-R-O-S-T-Y. Boudin, a noun meaning blood sausage. Sausage originates from French, adopted into Louisiana French with the same spelling. Boudin, a noun meaning blood sausage. Sausage originates from French, adopted into Louisiana French with the same spelling. Boudin, a noun meaning blood sausage. <laughs> really? Oh, we, dude, we can beat... You spelled 17 hard level words correctly. We can beat this. We can beat this. Mien. A noun meaning air or bearing especially as expressive of attitude or personality. Demeanor. The word is derived from shortening and alteration of its original form. Mien. A noun meaning air or bearing especially as expressive <laughs> of attitude or personality. Okay. It is. That's mien right there. Nine suk. A noun meaning a soft lightweight muslin. Nine suk comes from Hindi and Urdu and directly translates to eyes delight. Nine suk, a noun meaning a soft, lightweight muslin. Nine suk comes from Hindi and Urdu and directly translates to eyes delight. Nine suk, a noun meaning a soft, lightweight muslin. Nine suk comes from Hindi and Urdu this one's and rough, directly guys. translates to eyes delight. Nine suk, a noun meaning a soft, lightweight muslin. Nine suk comes from Hindi and Urdu and directly translates to eyes delight. Nine suk, a noun meaning a soft, lightweight muslin. Nine suk comes from Hindi and Urdu and directly translates to. I don't know. I don't know that one. That one's tough. Cotswold, a noun meaning any of an English breed of large, long wooled sheep. Cot it's British. It can't be spelled any other way. Griffin, a noun meaning Brussels griffin. The word originates from French, where it literally translates to griffin. Griffin, a noun meaning Brussels griffin. The word what originates the from French, that where mean? it literally translates to griffin. Griffin, a noun meaning Brussels griffin. So there's like 20 the different ways to spell this. from French, where it literally translates to griffin. Griffin, a noun meaning Brussels griffin. The word originates from French, where it literally translates to griffin. Griffin, a noun meaning Brussels griffin. The word originates from French, where it literally translates to griffin. Motherfucker! <laughs> griffin! A word meaning Brussels griffin, derived from the French griffin, which means griffin. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your help. This one doesn't even have any, any sound. Okay. Versimilitude. That would have been the clip of the century. Versimilitude. Griffin. The site can't be reached. It's broken. Okay, cool. 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 The site broke. Job's gone. Brad, what are you going to do? <laughs> Call that slash marker. That's the dulls. Still had fun. Still had fun with it. Balladrol! Balladrol! Al Pacino, if they made a dog day afternoon, but it was about Balladrol instead of uh, Attica. Balladrol! The movie's not about Attica. Well, someone should tell him that because he'd be shouting it like crazy in that bank or whatever. All right. Let's, um... Can I tell you that in an upcoming video of Balatro, in my opinion, I make one of my funniest jokes of all time, which is that it is just off the cuff. I, I was trying to pronounce this, and I said, I've got to be careful. If you mix up the G and the L, it becomes Dean Norris's most liked tweet of all time. 
pretty good. You got to think about it. You got to do a little forced dyslexia for a second there. Crazy hamburger stock's gone up with this game. Chibli, I don't know what you're talking about, but welcome to the chat. We could use some juice. I appreciate you being here. I do crazy hamburger for my daughter all the time. She likes it for the same reason I like it. It sounds funny. Crazy hamburger! It is horrible! We got a lot of bits. We've also got a bit we play while I'm driving, where um, she pretends to be a server in an Italian restaurant, and I put on an Italian accent and just order as much food as possible. We could play that for like 20 minutes, depending on traffic. Hey, I'll take a pepperoni pizza, uh, capiche? And I want it up before next Tuesday, if you get what, if you catch my drift. And she goes, okay, pepperoni pizza. And I go, okay, and some linguine primavera, too sweet, if you get my drift. And she's like, okay, linguine primavera. And I'm like, hey, and a strawberry milkshake, if you don't mind. So I can just do that for like, like 20 minutes. Especially with pasta, because there's like eight different sauces and 20 different noodles. So you can just like run the slot machine. It goes like ding, 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 ding. Hey, I'll take a little pesto farfalle. Ding, 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 ding. I'll take a little uh, spaghetti pomodoro. Ding, ding, ding. Like it just, you could, you could run it. I mean, you can crunch the numbers yourself. Isn't it like eight factorial or something like that? Cacio e pepe jackpot. In this economy, okay, slash marker. I don't think any, any co-op's happening today. I think we're just chilling. That's fine. I'm just going to get a Coke Zero. If we're chilling, I'm getting a Coke Zero. That's the rule. <clears throat> How did this happen? Uh, Lethal's kind of washed. They need to add more content. They need to add more monsters. Uh, Jackbox, we promise not to do it until Justin comes home and he gets back tomorrow. And then we floated a London opportunity out there and everyone said, oh, I think I've got something to do. Everyone except me and Corey. So that's how we ended up in this, in this situation. Is people sad that Lethal's washed? It can come back, okay? It's not perma-washed. How does it come back? It needs to have some new monsters, for one. I think there's a little push-pull. It needs new monsters because people don't get scared anymore. It's the necessary... It, there's always a war between the game developer and the gamer. The gamer always wants to conquer the, me giving my dissertation in gamer psychology. This is my PhD defense. There is a, a, the gamer has the will to conquer the game. They know that the game becomes not fun when it becomes too easy, but there's something in the human spirit that's like, no, 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 I want to trivialize this. I always want to trivialize everything. Oh, there's a slight bit of friction in my life. If I just automate all the stuff in my life that's interesting, then I can finally achieve true happiness, right? The game developer has to constantly be hitting them with the Reggie Bush front flips and doing like spin moves and, and stiff arms and stuff like that in order to keep the gamers at bay, which is what they actually want deep in their cerebellum. What they should do is you need some new monsters with new behaviors or another thing I think that they could do that is very easy change the behavior of the existing monsters so all these gamers that are presently walking in and they're just like psh, clear psh, clear psh, oh i got 18 handfuls of loot they crap their pants when they walk into a room with a loot bug and they're like guys there's a loot bug on uh, on corridor there's a loot bug on corridor over and then the loot bug like spits poison into their face and goes like tss, and then melts their head or something because you would never feel safe again even if that's the only thing they changed, every time you looked at another monster, you would be like, I don't know what this dude is going to do anymore. That would be sick. Because the problem with Lethal Company is it's only scary when you don't know what this stuff does. And the, the funny part of it is getting scared and seeing your friends get scared and then they die and the microphone gets cut off. Bracken scares me no matter what. I mean, I still get scared, but some of the people I play with don't get scared anymore. And I need them to get scared. Otherwise, I'm the only dude getting scared. I get scared playing video. I mean, it's not scared. I get startled playing video games. You tend to freeze up. I mean, it's a video game. You know, there's a little bit of kayfabe for content. It's not like a, a, like a plane crash situation. 
You gotta remember, you only see through this little box what I allow you to see. It's up to you to determine whether you think you know everything. Are you saying you're hard? Who's asking? <laughs> hey, Anel, what's your opinion on moving to Ottawa from Kingston? I, when I lived in Kingston, I really liked Ottawa. I saw it as like a tourist destination. Whenever I tell people that, they laugh at me until I cry. I don't know why, people who live in Ottawa seem to fucking hate Ottawa. And I can't tell them they're wrong because they live there. Like they would know more than me. But I always saw Ottawa when I lived in Kingston. I saw Ottawa as kind of like, whoa, it's like big Kingston. Like it's Kingston, but it gets chain restaurants that we don't get. They have no buildings taller than six stories. Well, I don't, I don't need to live in a skyscraper. If I wanted that, I'd move to Hamilton. It's close to Montreal. Yeah, it's close to Kingston. It's the Canberra of Canada. Is that bad? I've, I've never been to Australia. I like Kingston, you know, reasonably well as well. Honestly, I like living in the city. I, I hate that I'm about to say what I'm about to say because people who live like in a hut in Wyoming are going to be fist pumping. Some parts of living in the city are starting to piss me off. <laughs> You, there's too many fucking people, bro. And I know there's not, like, there's, like, from a population density standpoint, there isn't. But, like, I'm sick of driving to the damn grocery store, and the grocery store parking lot has no spots in the parking lot. Like, that's what it's there for. So now my ass has to arrive early to the grocery store, or if I'm going, like, between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., then I have to park on the street. Like, what? I am, I'm at the grocery store, bro. I gotta feed the meter just to get the the groceries now? That seems crazy. Why not walk? Well, we have walkable grocery stores, but some of them are fucking too expensive. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, you drop your kid off at like an activity or something like that, and then you're like, I'm gonna swing by the grocery store once I get there and then or on my way home and pick up a couple of things. And then once you get to the grocery store, you're like, what the fuck? Apparently food's on sale today. Apparently everybody loves to eat. Who knew? After three rounds, sell this card to duplicate a random Joker. We sell this and duplicate Wrathful Joker. And then we, this now becomes better as well. Jupiter is a gimme. They're selling $4 for $3. Me, when I'm... Uh, uh, me, after Jerome Powell raised interest rates, open parentheses, I work at the bank selling uh, three-year certified deposits. Right, Dio Guiga? It's going to be so funny when it turns out Dio Guiga is actually like 12 years old. and has been pretending to be a... Don't put that evil on me, okay? I think Dio Guiga is being truthful about their life. Because after uh, they had their child, they have not been back on the Peloton ever since. Now, that's not foolproof, but given the consistency with which they were riding with before, I don't think that, um, I don't think that like a 15-year-old pretending to be a Chicago financier. I don't know. Yeah, you're right. Maybe it was just the Christmas holidays are over and they had to go back to boarding school. <laughs> no, no, no. There's no way, man. There's no way. Where do you rank Wayne's World in the Austin Powers tier list? I don't want to make any enemies, Jay. Here's what I'll say. I feel like I know more about Austin Powers uh, than basically anybody I know, which makes me feel comfortable criticizing a movie like Goldmember, which I think is pure dog shit, straight up. Wayne's World... I've never been a big Wayne's World sort of guy, but I've also only seen both of the movies like two times each. So I don't feel comfortable going in on Wayne's World. Would you rather watch Goldmember or The Love Guru? Well, The Love Guru is easily like one of the worst movies ever made. So I'm, I'm using this just for the multiplier, just to be clear. Just, just in case, so bro, watch Goldmember again. You, would, I listen. I probably saw Goldmember two years ago. The older you get, the worse the movie gets. 
If they, if I was Benjamin Button, you should be telling me to watch Goldmember once a year on my birthday. Eventually, it'll be the funniest movie I've ever seen. But I, there's no going back for me. Worst movie you've ever seen in theaters? That's actually like a tough question because I've seen a lot of bad movies in theaters. Like ignoring stuff that I saw in theaters when I was like literally a child and the movie's kind of bad on purpose. I saw Transformers 2 in theaters, Terminator Salvation, Alien vs. Predator Requiem, Fantastic Four 2, Rise of the Silver Surfer. Like that, those are four of like the worst movies of the 21st century so far for sure. I saw all those in theaters. Meet the Spartans? I, I can't meet you on that one. That's crazy. I might take that to the grave with me. <laughs> if I saw Meet the Spartans in theaters. Morpheus, hands down. Are you okay? Did I miss the release of a Morpheus standalone film? He meant Morbius. Oh, they meant Morbius. <laughs> now it all makes sense. It's insane that they haven't... Actually, you know what is not insane? That they haven't made, like, a Morpheus Disney Plus TV show? Because I actually feel like, in spite of the fourth Matrix movie being, like, pretty bad, the Wachowskis actually seem to have some integrity in the sense that they're very protective of their IP. That makes sense to me. On the other hand, you can't ruin <laughs> something that's already ruined, so... Maybe just let it fly? They made plenty of bad stuff. Yeah, but it never feels like they really made bad stuff for any other reason than they wanted to. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta have respect for some filmmakers that are like, yeah, it sucks, but, like, I loved making it, instead of, like, yeah, it sucked, but the market demanded, like, a third Jurassic World. But Morpheus, they should make a Morpheus movie. But only if they invite Lawrence Fishburne back. I'm no longer that upset by it, I think. Surely you just... No, wait, we have enough. No, we don't have enough. Surely, I, I repeat myself, surely you jest. We can't seem to get the, the guaranteed flushes, bro. I'm, I'm playing two pairs out here and getting, getting laughed off the... Actually, those hand was pretty good, never mind. British people be like... So true. Three, four, five, six, seven. British people be like griffin. Meaning of the word is a Brussels griffin. From the French, griffin. That's, you gotta go way back to um, the spelling part of the stream in order to understand that. I think I'm very blessed with the direction that my Twitch career has taken me. The natural endpoint of being a streamer is that 90% of every stream is going to be your browser window. There's only two, there's two wolves inside of you. Online trivia to keep your brain sharp or TikTok reacts to dull the intelligence of yourself and everybody else around you. Now, I'm not deluding myself into thinking that, like, what I'm doing is necessarily, like, raising the intellect of the nation. Like, this is not, uh, you know, Charles Van Doren or anything like that. Oh, I miss gambling. I forgot about that. Sometimes I wish you reacted to content. It's funny that there are still... And don't take this the wrong way if you're a gaming Andy. It's funny that there's still so many gaming Andrews on the website. Where, like, if you make non-gaming content people are like bro come on can you put up like some spelunky on in the background while you talk about like the tyranny of the double lane fast food drive through or something like that like i know you're talking about exactly the same thing when you're doing the dulls and stuff like that but it, like i'd love to be like bro you went in the wrong direction you need to go to vlad's castle instead of the, the ushabti path like that you gotta embrace, like, the absurdity of life sometimes. Like, rather than be like, you are the problem, what's wrong with you? Instead, I'm like, you have to admire the uh, heterogeny of human existence. Everybody's a little bit different. Some people are like, I can only focus on the banter if, like, there's a game that I understand in the background. My perspective is that this website, like, tricks people into becoming insane in a good way 
you go, oh, I need something to watch on my second monitor. I like uh, The Binding of Isaac. So I'll search The Binding of Isaac on Twitch. That's like, you just made your first mistake. And then like a year later, you're like, you know, what are you even talking about? Diced onions are way better than onion rings. And then like 10 years later, you're like, Hemomancer. And that's the end point. I'm realizing it makes no sense that I hate poker, but I love Yahtzee. Jay, I think they're... B Yahtzee is fun because it's like so lightweight. I think poker can be a fun time too. But I, I will tell you, this is not... I'm not trying to judge people. Your hobbies are whatever you're, you know, you want them to be. Poker kind of got washed like three years after it went super viral after becoming really famous on TV. I feel like playing poker used to be like a lot of fun until one in six dudes became like a retired ex-poker pro. And now every time someone's like, hey, do you want to play a quick game of poker? You got to like look around the table and figure out if they're going to bend you over. That you get your ass beat all night and then one of the dudes is like, yeah, yeah, I used to play, I used to do be like six tables deep uh, simultaneously, like online for like four years of my life. And I'm like, good, though. Yeah. Okay, I'll tell you what, next time I'm going to bring my old N64 and we're going to play the first Super Smash Bros game. That should be fun for everybody. They should make a Yahtzee roguelite. It's crazy to me, uh, roguelite, I forget where, where I saw this. I feel like it was either like on Twitter or in some other streamer's chat. But I saw someone say, like, I'm so tired of uh, every single game being, like, a board game meets roguelite in the modern era. And I just thought about how far the gaming industry has come. You know, every year there's, like, two dozen dog water AAA third-person shooters riddled with microtransactions designed to keep you on, like, the hedonic treadmill of, like, my gun does more damage, but now the enemies have more HP, but now my gun does more damage, but now the enemies have more HP, but now my gun does more damage, but now my en the enemies have more HP, but now my gun does even more damage, but now the enemies have even more HP. Good job to the indie devs for actually getting to the point where you've become a little bit hated. They can't ignore you anymore. Also, it just speaks even further. And I know everybody now, here's the thing. What, what is it they say? First they hate you, then they love you, then you win or whatever. In 2017, started playing Slay the Spire. I wasn't even the first guy to play it. But I was like, holy fuck, this is the greatest game ever made. Um... And also, like, I wish they made, like, a billion more of these. Well, everyone said, fuck you, NL. Actually, the greatest game of all time is going to be Anthem. Look where that got you. And now, seven years after Slay the Spire came out in Early Access, it's one of the most influential games ever made. No one said that? You go back at the... Hey, this looks like a, this... Uh, it's Slay the Spire. It, it looks pretty fun, but I don't know. I don't really vibe with the art. Could be fun for an hour or two. I was there in 2018, it was real. They were there in 2018, okay? It was real. You weren't there in 2018. Your ass was probably in the fourth grade, which is why you feel nostalgic for 2016 right now. One time I saw someone describe Slint as hoe-scaring music. Yeah, I guess if the hoes don't like good music, I wouldn't assume that. I, I assume that, like, everybody wants to like good music, but... I mean, apparently some people want to be presumptuous towards the hose. Maybe that's what's scaring the hose off in the first place. You and you at your girlfriend's house when a cool guy comes over and tries to play Slint? No, 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 don't play that. She doesn't want to hear that. Let's put on something a little bit more your speed, like the Black Eyed Peas. She says, what the fuck? You think I don't like Slint? Fucking put it on. Then she's fucking vibing and you're like, fuck, I gave her the ick, bro. No! <laughs> and you know what? You deserve it, because it sounds like you were being kind of a butthead to begin with. It's actually misogynistic to accuse women of liking Slint. Listen, you might be right about that. I'm not the expert. Chad is the expert on misogyny, because you can't say shit without Chad being like, that's misogynist. Apparently, you can't even say that women are statistically slightly more likely to, to like sushi more than men. That's offensive in today's modern era, apparently. You know what's crazy? When I say men like pizza more than women, nobody ever says that's sexist. They just say he's, he's speaking the truth again. 
I don't know what that says about society and our role in it, but anyway. Hey, NL, they opened up a conveyor belt sushi restaurant in my town. Should I go? Well, it's complicated. I don't mind a conveyor belt sushi restaurant because you can eat as much as you want. But the question is, they tend to be like, if you have a big appetite, you will spend so much money at a conveyor belt sushi restaurant. I could always eat more of almost anything than a restaurant serves. At some point, I don't know, maybe like 19, 20, 21 years old, I crossed that threshold of like, a restaurant doesn't serve more food than I can eat in a single sitting anymore. So now I actually appreciate going to a restaurant because I'm only going to eat as much food as they put on the plate. If I go to like a buffet or a conveyor belt sushi restaurant, it's very easy to overdo it. And at a buffet, you kind of, that's what you're there for, right? Like you're, you're paying a little extra upfront to maybe debase yourself. But at a conveyor belt sushi restaurant, every single plate costs you more money. So you can, you can really get the, the price tag up there pretty quick. You got to either go in there and be like, I'm going to spend 30 bucks and that's it. Or you got to be like, I'm going to be gluttonous and just know that when the bill comes, it's going to hurt. Thanks for the info. It's in Ohio. Okay, that changes everything. Do not go there. You are too far away from the ocean. I don't have any discards left. I have a flush though. I'm joking. I know it's, it's frozen like almost everywhere unless you're like in Nihonbashi or something like that. I am for the most part. I mean, I wouldn't say no to going to a conveyor belt sushi restaurant, but like I would rather go to a, oh, I lost. <laughs> it's a dumb idea. I would rather go to a quote unquote normal sushi restaurant, I guess. Unless the sushi is ass, in which case I would like to eat a lot of it. In which case, take me to the conveyor belt sushi. It's, it's weird, but the worse the sushi, sushi is, the, the more you would like to have like a large portion size. It's that classic joke. How about pizza? Uh, you should never have to go to like an all-you-can-eat pizza restaurant. Like I, I get that we're all nostalgic for the Pizza Hut lunch buffet, but like almost any amount of pizza should be enough to sate you. Even as like a, a an adult, I was going to say a grown-up. That's how you know I talk to like a, a three-year-old a lot. Even as a grown-up, one slice of pizza should be enough. Like if you throw that in your engine, you should be satisfied and good to go for a couple hours. Now, I would rather have two, three, put the pizza in the fridge, say that's enough. An hour later, be like, nah, I'm going to have to have a fourth slice immediately. You get the idea. But you, could, you should be able to survive on one slice for a bit. You shouldn't be like, I absolutely need two. Two slices at least? I'm not saying that one slice is like a good dinner. I'm just saying... Like one plate of sushi from a conveyor sushi restaurant is literally like two pieces of fish and a little bit of rice. It's probably like 90 calories. Like you're, you're comparing like apples to dust. Is this because you're petite? I'm literally like the average size of a man in like 1983. This, I'm not petite. Did you see? I, here's all I'm going to say, okay? As long as we're making enemies here at the end of the acetylcholine stream. Did you see, um, there was a, a report that came out and that got, it went pseudo viral on Twitter. And it was like, um, every polyvinyl bag, reusable bag created is actually like more destructive to the environment than something like, you know, using a thousand of the plastic bags that just got banned. And then in the, in the chain of whataboutism, so many people replied to that and said, we stopped using single-use plastics because they were getting into the ocean. And then the person replied to them and said, actually, like 78% of all microplastics created come from tire dust, which is something I did not know. Then they said, yeah, but the tire dust is not getting into the turtles' noses. And then they replied with like a scientific journal that was like the microplastics are being eaten by like the phytoplankton, which is then getting 
uh, bio amplified up the food chain and like killing whales and stuff like that holy man so can if we're all in this together can you at least stop looking at me like i'm an environmental terrorist when i forget to bring my reusable bags to the grocery store the i don't mind bringing the bags okay we either have them in the trunk was ironic is they should look at me like an asshole for driving because my tire dust is getting into the ocean and killing like blue whales or i'll walk to the grocery store and i'll take the reusable bags but if you ever are like i don't have any bags everybody looks at you like you're an actual like terrorist like you've committed a crime against the environment it's got to be the calculus on it has to be like it's not that much effort but the effort to reward ratio is actually like 0.0000001. It's crazy, man. I'm in rural Pennsylvania. They'll give us free plastic bags for no reason. Shit, have I become the guy that's just going to say base to that? I don't know. It always makes me laugh, too, because, like, they don't sell plastic bags anymore, but everybody's in the produce section grabbing single-use plastic bags and putting, like, four grapes into the plastic bag because I don't like when the grapes touch the oranges. That's just gross. Then, they like, it, it doesn't make any sense, bro. There's hypocrisy everywhere. And then when you buy meat, they're like, do you want to put a plastic bag around the meat? And I'm like, no, that's fine. And they're like, I'm just going to do it anyway. And I'm like, well, that way do you, you leave H Mart and they gave you like 12 plastic bags that you didn't even want. But you have to have reusable bags, otherwise you gotta carry all this stuff out to your car like Fred Flintstone. Well, yabba dabba do, brother! Yabba dabba do! Yeah, yeah, I saw your comment about me having a private jet. You know, I'm just, I'm, I'm being the nice guy. I'm telling you that I saw it so you don't have to feel like you have to post it again. He didn't even read the comment, right? I don't exist to, to read your comment, okay? If you want that, get uh, the chat GPT they use for spell check XYZ, assuming it hasn't been hit with the Reddit hug of death. If you want the comment to be read exactly right, write better comments, okay? And there's two ways you can do that. You can either write the greatest comment of all time that makes me laugh, and then I'll, I'll read it out loud. Or alternatively, you could build up a, a reputation of being a decent chatter over a long time frame, and then I'll read everything you type for the rest of your life. Now, only like four people have ever reached that level in chat. It's one of those things. If you're part of the instant gratification generation, you're not going to like it, okay? Because it's going to take you like months and months to get to that point at the best. Hot boy toke, they're, they're on track, okay? They're on track for a promotion. When they type stuff like gay Jar Jar Binks be like, Misa wanna sucka ya kaka? <laughs> what about scath eyes? I worry about them a little bit, not because um, of what they type in chat, but because of the fact that in Apollo's chat, they're just normal. And they've been keeping up the Northern Lion harem bit here for literally like three or four years, which is like the kind of sustenance of a bit that can only be indicative of genius or like unchecked mental illness. That's not me like trying to punch down. That's me being like genuine <laughs> holy keplerian a biographical name meaning johannes 1571 easiest word of my life keplerian discord a no! noun meaning lack of agreement or harmony a uh, 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 a noun meaning a uh, uh, place you chat with your boys insurance a noun meaning coverage by Insurance is a hard word now. Lula Alaco. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, caught, caught. I take it back. I wish I hadn't said anything. They gave me the Hawaiian dictionary now. Lula Alaco, a geographical name meaning volcano, 22,057 feet, 6,723 meters, high in the Andes of northern Chile on the border with Argentina, southeast of Antofagasta. Lula Alaco. A geographical name meaning volcano, 22,057 feet, 6,723 meters, high in the Andes of Imagine Northern Chile, on the border this would with be the Argentina, greatest read of all time. Of Antofaga oh. <laughs> so close. E-mate. A verb meaning to give out by measure, dole out, 
usually used without. The word originates from Middle English, which derived from Old English matan, be mate, a verb meaning to give out by measure. What? Dole out, usually used without. The word originates from Middle English, which derived from Old English matan, be mate, a verb I meaning to give even, out by measure. I can't even understand what she's saying. Be mate. Be mate. E mate. A verb. E mate. A verb me. I, I'll take the L on that one. I can't understand what she's saying. Connoisseur. A noun meaning expert. Don't make me laugh. I'm mad now. I'm playing on tilt. Lilliput. A noun meaning an island in Swift's Gulliver's. I think I don't know shit about Gulliver's travels, bro. Inadvertent. A adjective meaning unintentional. In Bullshit. Betany. <laughs> A noun Paul, meaning a last... Paul, Bethany, Paul. Oh, brother. We go one more time. What do we get to 10? Our record is 17. Emolument. A noun meaning the returns arising from off... I'm throwing. Extenuation. A noun meaning... Just don't even think... Of, just go with your, your gut. Conidarian. A noun meaning any of a phylum, canidaria, of radially symmetrical aquatic invertebrate animals that have a hollow digestive cavity... <laughs> opening to the outside by a single <laughs> opening, surrounded by one or more nematocyst-studded whorls of tentacles that occur as single or colonial sessile, typically columnar polyps or usually mm -hmm. free-swimming, bell-shaped some of those bell -shaped words are. medusae, and that include the corals, sea anemones, jellyfishes, hydras, She's and yapping, Portuguese man-of-wars, called also coelenterate. Canidaria is a term from New Latin, combining Greek nidae for nettle and Latin aria. Conidarian. A noun meaning any of a phylum. No shot. There's no shot. Oh my god, it's fucking broken again. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm, they're verifying I'm not a robot again? Okay, but we, we got one last chance at this. A positive. It works. A noun meaning a pair or occasionally a series of usually adjacent words, phrases, or clauses, especially nouns or noun equivalents, that have the same referent and that stand in the same syntactical relation to the rest of the sentence, such as the poet and Burns in a biography of the poet Burns. The architect and the builder of words, arrive calmly from their escalator with a sense opposition. of purpose. Your request seems unclear. Could you please specify the word for which you need the etymology? A positive. <laughs> a noun meaning a pair. Oh, brother. <laughs> Columbia, a noun yes! meaning the United Hemorrhage, a noun meaning I always a get this or heavy discharge wrong. of blood from the blood vessels. Oh, I always get hemorrhage wrong. That's one of my, my trouble words. Duello, a noun meaning the... Iatrogenic, an adjective meaning induced... Un Ryukyu, a geographical name... Okay, just don't think about it. Just, just play by feel, spell by feel. Arenaceous, an adjective... Arenaceous. It, this is bullshit. She starts halfway through the sentence. Arenaceous. An adjective meaning resembling, made of, or containing sand or sandy particles. Arenaceous comes from the Latin word arena, meaning sand. Arenaceous. An adjective meaning. Fuck you. Immiscible. An adjective meaning incapable. We're getting 17. Acites. A noun meaning abnormal. Aversion. A noun meaning. Excuse me? What did you call me? Byramy. A noun meaning a galley with two banks of oars used especially... Fuck. Lesser of two weevils. Cladding. A noun meaning some... Ptosis. A noun meaning a sagging or prolapse of an organ or part. <laughs> What's the... Oh, but, ptosis, ptosis. Can we go again? We go again? Coadjutor. A noun... Oh. Constricting. A verb meaning... T Coincidence. A noun meaning the act or condition. If you combine this with the typing test, I'm going plat, okay? Reprobate. A noun meaning an unprincipled or... Expatiate. A verb meaning... Don't even think about it. Tanager. A noun meaning any... Ferruginous. An adjective meaning of relating to or containing iron. Ferrugineous derived... <laughs> There's no chance. Daguerreotype. A noun meaning an early... I thought we had that for sure. No, not the daily. Not the daily. Don't make me laugh. Peregrination. 
A verb meaning to travel especially on foot. Walk. What? Truculently. An oh, adjective this one, meaning that's a, a gimme. Gluten. Yes! A noun meaning countenance. A noun meaning look, express pseudonymous. A adjective meaning bearing or using These are gimmies. We got a chance. This is the god seed. Katsura. A noun meaning a duplicate word. Padre. A noun meaning easy word. Edinburgh. A biographical name meaning duke of easiest word. Reservoir. A noun meaning a place where something is kept. It has another R. That's like an eighth grade word. That one hurts. Moulage. A noun meaning an impress. Easy. Cobalamin. A noun meaning vitamin B12. Cobalamin. A noun meaning vitamin B12. Cobalamin. A noun. No! Contagious. A adjective. Hold. Luculent. A adjective meaning clear in thought or. Hold. Inexorably. A adjective meaning not to be per. We're on a streak. Caviola. A noun meaning a. F Bullshit. Telemon. A noun meaning atlas. We stay till we win. Scintillation. A noun meaning an act or instance of scintillating. Indicia. A plural noun meaning... Fuck you. Strychnine. Fake word. A noun meaning a bitter poisonous alcohol. Meiosis. A noun... What? Meiosis is an M-Y-O-S-I-S? Oh, it's M-E-I. Oh, M-E-I-O-S-I-S. Oh. Pasquinade. A noun meaning a lampoon posted in. We got pasquinade though. Facile. A adjective meaning. Inevitable. A adjective meaning incapable. Cabal. A noun. Byroth. A geographical name. It's not Byroth, huh? Cormorant. A noun meaning. Moulage. A noun meaning an impression or. Abeyance. A noun meaning a state of temporary inactivity. Abeyance. Well, she should learn how to talk, honestly, if she's going to be the spelling bee reader. Girondole. A noun meaning a radiating and showy composition, such as a cluster of skyrockets. This together. can't be right. This word has roots in both French and Italian languages. Girondole. A noun meaning a radiating and... I, 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 they said it again. I figured we'd take a chance. Apoplexy. A noun meaning stroke. <laughs> I'm going apoplexy mode on my penis right now. You and your friend is addicted to gooning, but also he's studying for the SATs. I'm apoplexying my penis right now. Brother, I don't need to know that, okay? Coffee clutch. A noun meaning an informal social gathering for coffee and conversation. Coffee clutch is a German term formed from coffee, meaning coffee, and clutch meaning gossip. Coffee clutch. <laughs> That's not possible. Psychiatrist. That's possible. A noun meaning a medical doctor who diagnoses... Hortatory. Adjective meaning hortative, exhortatory. Hortatory. <laughs> adjective meaning hortative, Dude, exhortative. dude, I'm real. We should stop making fun of Dutch. Because English is just as fucked. Listen to this. Hortatory. Adjective meaning hortative, exhortatory. Hortatory. Adjective meaning hortative, exhortatory. Or exhortatory. Hortatory. hortatory. An adjective meaning hortative, or exhortatory. Hortatory. Adjective meaning hortative, ex And it's wrong. Fortissimo. A adverb or adjective meaning very loud. We're back, baby. Renal. A adjective... <laughs> it's to do with the kidneys. Callous. A adjective meaning being hardened and thickened. Atrocity. A noun meaning a shock... Ineffective. A adjective meaning not produced. Vociferous. A adjective meaning marked by. Hold. Bechamel. A noun meaning. Hold. Propane. Yes! A meaning a <laughs> New world record spelling champion. Apocryphal. A adjective meaning of doubtful. Numenon. A noun meaning a posited object or event as it N O U M E N O N, Numenon. All right. Okay. Well, listen, I'm going to, I'm taking a little issue with Kafakach because that shit, I would bet that this is not in the average dictionary. I'm not saying it's not in any dictionary, 
but this is not in the average English dictionary. K-A-F-F-E-E-K-L-A-T-S-C-H, Kafaklatsch. Oh, pinyon, <laughs> pinyon. Oh, man. This would be an insane name for like a, a coffee shop in Portland, though. Pinyon shower handle. Okay, I'm going to send you over to my wife's stream. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. I think we're playing some Jackbox tomorrow. Later. First time chatter? Does this streamer ever talk about the game? You must be new here. Most of the student Twitch streamer, you must be new here. It's rare to witness a, a type of A chatter being born. Lightning crashes, a moderator dies. The confusion levels heads and goes down. The new, the new chatter down the hall. Oh, Matt Streamers ramped in once again. You know what I'm saying? The confusion levels heads. <laughs> the confusion is a doobie level in heads. To the glory of the high, high, the fetus opens her eyes. The confusion sets in <laughs> and gives birth to the fetus down the hall. Oh, my fetus setting in again like confusion, thunder leveling heads. Put the fetus at the center of the setting in. Pale blue colored eyes. Confusion sets in to the angel down the hall. I know what you're saying. That's, dude, that's a classic from the 90s. That's a 90s classic, without a doubt.